Hey guys, it's Anthony Fontana here. I'm a CPA with EA Tax Resolutions. And today I'm going over the HSA and the FSA, the pros and cons to each, the tax savings behind these things, how they work, and my two cents on the whole thing. Stay tuned. All right, so you're probably watching this video because you got offered some benefits by your employer, those being an FSA or an HSA, and you want to know what you should decide to get, and I'm here to help you decide that and lay out kind of like the pros and cons between each of these and how these can save you on taxes. Uh, but first, let's lay it out here. The HSA stands for a health savings account, whereas the FSA stands for a flexible savings arrangement. Lucky for you, we're going through a PowerPoint today to hopefully illustrate everything that I'm trying to explain and uh, get get it to stick on your end. All right, so without further ado, let's jump in here. I'm gonna first, let's see here, explain that uh, the FSA, there's like three separate types of FSA, and the one we're talking about today is the health FSA, because that's the one that is in direct contrast to the HSA, okay? So to start out with the similarities between these two, they're both pre-tax accounts used to pay for qualified medical expenses. So what that means is basically they are tax write-offs here. You don't have to pay taxes on the money that you're putting into these things. So if you, you know, let's say you make like 60,000 and you put $1,000 into one of these, your taxable income would be 59,000. You wouldn't be taxed on that $1,000. That's what that means. So that's the similarity between the two. Both of them, you and your employer can both contribute to these accounts and contributions made by your employer can be excluded from your gross income too. So those are where the similarities end. On to the contribution limits. So the amount you can contribute is set by the feds and uh, this is what they are. For 2021 with the HSA, depends upon if you have either the individual or the family plan, but it's 3,600 bucks or 72 for 2021. And for the FSA, doesn't matter what kind of plan you got, but it's 2750. For 22, they upped it with the HSA for 3650 with the individual and 7300 with the family. And 2022 with the FSA, we just don't know yet, okay? There is a catch-up contribution with the HSA. If you're 55 or older, you can contribute an additional $1000 to the already set contribution limits. Uh, the FSA there is no catch-up contribution with the FSA, but the FSA, your employer may match up to the limit, uh, but it depends on your employer's plan. So let's say you put $2,750, your employer potentially can contribute $2,750, so a total of $5,500 can go into that FSA. All right, on to the pros and cons between each of these. So here's kind of a long slide. Bear with me here, okay? At the end of this, I'm going to give you my opinion on what I think you should get based on kind of like a situation, okay? Uh, so the HSA we know is a tax-free savings account for health expenses. Uh, any amount you can contribute to the HSA and you don't use, you do get to keep for your life. So it does stay with you. Whereas the HSA, if you don't use it within the year with the HSA, you lose the amount. So let's say you put 2,000 bucks in the FSA, you had no medical expenses, so you didn't use it. That 2,000 bucks is basically gone. You didn't get any benefit out of this thing. So uh, that is a con with the FSA. There is an exception for 2020 and 2021 where you know if you didn't use the amounts for 2020, you can use them for 21. And that's the same with 21. If you didn't use the amounts in 21, you can use it for 2022. The HSA, uh, an awesome thing is you can invest the amount that you contributed to the HSA into like a brokerage account. So potentially, you know, you can invest your HSA in like Tesla or something like that. Any type of stocks, bonds, uh, ETFs, mutual funds, you can do with the HSA. Whereas the FSA, we can't do that. Uh, all the interest and earnings from like your stocks or bonds are also tax-free with the HSA, which is, I say, a massive, massive pro to the HSA. So uh, potentially you put like $5,000 in the HSA this year. You didn't use it. You've invested it all and you don't use it actually for the next five years, that $5,000 grows to, let's say $10,000, that $5,000 gain is non-taxable too, which is awesome, okay? Uh, the HSA is eligible uh, for self-employed individuals. So again, if you're looking for advice on tax savings, the HSA for your self-employed, whereas that is not available with the FSA, it didn't pop up, but it will in a second, okay? 
uh, you can change the amount you contribute to the HSA at any point during the year. So if in January you're like, uh, maybe I don't put like 500 bucks in my HSA and then like March comes around you're like, eh, I don't, I'm tight for money, I need to pay for my taxes, um, then you don't have to, right? You can change that with the HSA. Whereas the FSA, you can't do that. So there it is, right? Not eligible, self-employed with the FSA. And with the FSA, you have to declare how much you're gonna contribute to the FSA at the beginning of the year. So you kind of have to like guesstimate like your medical expenses at the beginning of the year. And then every month periodically you, you have an amount withdrawn from your paycheck, uh, like uh, an equal amount that's, that's taken out. Once you declare the amount at the, at the beginning of the year, how much is taken out, you can't change it, which is, I say, uh, is, is a downside to the FSA. Um, like you can't say like, like we did in the, in the previous example, I'm sorry, uh, where like, you know, you put 500 bucks in January and then March, you're like, I can't do it. No, you don't do that with the FSA. Now that we've been bashing the FSA here, let's go on to the pros of the FSA. Uh, so the FSA can be used with any health insurance plan, whereas the HSA has to be a high deductible health insurance plan. So high deductible, meaning all the stuff is coming out of your pocket first before the insurance kind of kicks in. Uh, that's a downside for the HSA, okay? Whereas the FSA, you don't, you can get any health insurance plan um, and the FSA will qualify for that. The FSA is not reported on your tax return, um, so makes it easier for record keeping. Whereas the HSA, it does produce a 1099 for any amount that you um, use throughout the year. So if you're gonna go use the HSA to pay for medical expenses, you have to report that on the, your tax return and say that they are for qualified medical expenses or else the IRS is gonna come through and wanna tax that money, okay? So then it would be like, why do you have the HSA in the first place? A pro of the FSA, you can use the FSA to pay for qualified medical expenses even if you haven't yet placed the funds in the account. What does that mean? So like I said before, you have to declare how much you're gonna put in the FSA at the beginning of the year and then periodically you're putting that amount in uh, as a monthly contribution with your paychecks. Now let's say you elected like $2,000 for the year and a couple months went by and like $300 you've actually contributed to the FSA and you went to the doctor and they're like, okay, yeah, you have a big, big medical bill and you're like, yeah, but I only have $300 in my FSA. No, what you can do is you can actually take out the full 2,000 out of the FSA. They're pre-funded actually um, because you're committing with that declaration to that 2,000 at the beginning of the year. So even though you don't have the 2,000 in the account, you can use it. Whereas the HSA, not a thing. You can only use the amount that you actually put into the HSA. Uh, you can be any age and have the FSA, whereas the HSA you have, must be under 65. Um, let's see here, a con that just popped up for the HSA can't be claimed on someone else's tax return. So if you're dependent of someone else, you can't have an HSA, whereas the FSA, you can. All right, let's go back here. Uh, my opinions here, okay? HSA, I think, is, a, is totally a better deal, um, especially if you don't have a lot of medical expenses. A lot of people use the HSA as like a retirement plan. I mean, as you see here, one of the cons is if you have to be under age 65 to have the HSA. And so people use this as like a retirement plan because then they can use those medical expenses when they retire. Um, and anything that grows in the account, like we saw here, is tax-free as well. Um, and now I say, if you have low medical expenses, it's good to have the HSA because if you have a lot, you have a high deductible health insurance plan. And so a lot of it's coming out of your pocket and having the insurance pick up any of the tab generally speaking, uh, with the uh, HSA. Vice versa, if you got a lot more in uh, expenses like this year, the, I think the FSA is a better deal. Um, so that's it, that's my opinion there. And I'm gonna show you here the tax savings for each, okay? So in our example, I'm gonna go over uh, the taxpayer is married, they have two dependents, they have uh, just a gross income of 91K, therefore their taxable is about 66,000, and they have a Fed tax bracket of 12% and a California tax bracket of six. So here we go. We're gonna start with the FSA on the right. Uh, the max contribution we know is 2750. There's a 12% Fed tax bracket and a 6% California. So the 18% here is our savings. The basically 500 bucks um, is the tax savings for establishing the FSA and so long that you're using all of that for the year, like we said. Whereas the HSA, 
There's a higher contribution limit if we got the family, right? 7,300 bucks. There's a 12% tax bracket, same thing with the feds. However, California does not use this as a deduction. So we only get the fed tax rate. So the 12% of 7,300 bucks is about $900 in tax savings with, with the HSA. Now, keep in mind, the tax savings only go up as your tax bracket goes up. So let's say on the high end here, savings will be greater the higher tax bracket is. Highest tax bracket for the Fed is 37%. With California, it's 13.3%. So if we have the HSA, right, it's only the uh, the 37% of 7,300 bucks uh, is the $2,700 tax savings. So the tax savings is a lot higher. Whereas the HSA, we have the, oh geez, I have to see that typo, 20%. No, it's 50% there, um, but that's okay. Um, with the FSA, we have that 50% of the uh, $2,700. So your savings is $1,300. You see them, the savings, how they go up based on your tax brackets, right? They can go up kind of a lot. All right, so I mean, it's, it's kind of like based on two things. Why I think the HSA is a better deal, especially if you have low medical expenses. Number one, your tax savings is going to be higher because the amount that you can contribute is higher. Um, but then number two, I like the fact that you don't lose it if you, you don't use it, right? The use it or lose it thing with the FSA is, I feel like a deal breaker because like, who knows what's going to happen at the, you know, for the year. I mean, maybe some people, they do have certain expenses that are, are kind of periodic with medical um, and they can kind of gauge that with the FSA, but uh from my experience, I just don't see that. So that's why I think the uh, HSA is a better deal. Um, but again, you can kind of see that also with the tax savings, that it is more of a tax savings uh, with the HSA versus the FSA. Again, because the contribution amount is higher. What else we got here? Frequently asked questions. Can you have an FSA and an HSA together? No, you can't. You got to choose one or the other, okay? However, you can have a dependent care FSA and an HSA together. Um, I'm going over that dependent care FSA in a separate video. I think that thing is awesome. I am a heavy, heavy promoter of that thing, especially if you have kids and you're already paying for um, childcare. I think it's a great deal if that's offered by your employer. So when can you sign up for an HSA or an FSA? It's during open enrollment. So open enrollment for 2022 starts November 1st and it ends December 15th if you want the coverage to begin you know, the first of the year. Um, but if you want it to begin later, you can sign up later. I, you know, you gotta check in with like HR on this one, okay? There are also other certain exceptions to signing up, like if you just got a job with your employer, you know, there's like a certain time period too that you can sign up or if you got married or if you had a kid, there's other um, certain things, what they call qualifying events um, for when you can sign up for uh, health insurance or the HSA and FSA. Can my spouse have an FSA and I have an HSA? No, again, um, and the reason for this is because the expenses for both the HSA or the FSA can be used for yourself, uh, your spouse or your dependent. So. Short answer is no. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. I really hope so. This was a common question that I was getting from clients, so I thought I'd make a video about it. If it did help you out, please share this with anyone that you think it could also help out. And if you want more videos that would help you out with taxes, subscribe to our channel. Help me out with the YouTube algorithm and hit that like button. And if you have any additional questions, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. Thank you so much, guys.